I'm lucky early on in my career where I've had artists hit lightning in the bottle. So you've had to be reactive quick, like, oh shit, it's working really quick. And I've had it on from a pop perspective when I was working early on with Lady Gaga um, on her first record when there was no radio and all of a sudden Just Dance was popping. All of a sudden she's the hottest thing and I have to do pop-up store appearances with her and, and all these things. Like it started there, you kind of saw it, but the thing is there's a, there's a reaction moment. And I think that's where we have to be reactive off of, it goes back to brands, right? Reacting off of brand moments. Uh, we saw it with Gaga. I saw it early on with a rock band called Otherwise when I had a song called Soldiers Get Picked Up by the Military. Um, and, and, and the band didn't really necessarily grow, but the song grew out of it and got the band some opportunities. Uh, but that became the theme song of the military, and that was all organic. So it's like being prepared where, okay, that song hits, cool. We can get you a record deal. We can get you a, a touring. We can get you a booking. We can get you moving on that to get the business going. But then at the end of the day, just like anything, it's up to the business leaders to take that momentum and continue that momentum. Um, so I think you can see that over time. It's like you flash in the pans, you know, some, some maintain, some go away. And I think that goes back to being prepared for the flash in the pan. So every one of my clients from Mike Stead to Amanda to Fred, we're always thinking three, five years from now um, to answer your question. What's the world going to be in five years, Clay? I think you're going to see a, a revolt back into tangible a little bit uh, based off of data I'm seeing, based off of how youth is um, exploring content. Now, I think the, the tangible moments are going to be more, uh, more important. I don't think it's going to be the same amount of volume tangible, but I think you're going to find a nice balance between digital and physical from the real world to the, to the digital world. Um, from, from a live events perspective, from enjoying it, from watching it like you and I are, to having conversation, I think that's going to get even more, quote unquote, intrusive and more personal. Um, and the reason I say that is because technology will allow you and I to feel like we're in the same room, but there's also going to be that gap where we don't want that. And I think you're starting to see that now with the cell phone change and the kids and the type of music they're listening to and the vinyl resurgence and whatnot. You're not going to see a CD come back, but you can see the vinyl being the core way you listen to music again. Um, mm -hmm. Outside just the quick Spotify's, which has turned into that's your radio now. So I, think yeah, I mean, for artists to hit big now, I mean, don't they have to have a really good live outing, whether it's a great concert tour? I mean, that's driving the revenue and the exposure in the brand now, isn't it? It's everything. You got to have a, a, a three tier brand. I, mean, I keep saying about the brand stuff, but you know the music's got to be incredible. The content, the visual content you have to have is has to be incredible and on par with the music you're releasing. The show has to be on par with the content and the music that you're releasing. So those three things go hand in hand, and then you can start seeing the growth happen, and then getting in front of the right audiences. And that's where it's like, you know, the way I have always operated for arts development, because I started really early on with Interscope, is that you balance between support and headline, right? And this is just straight music conversation right now. So get on the big tours, kill them, try to make your money back if you can, invest in your production, invest in your experience, then come back and headline, and then take those fans, and then come back and support and take those fans, and just keep snowballing it from there. I think the biggest mistake, especially in the rock space, um, I don't see this in any other genre of music is that rock artists are at the mercy of headliners. Every development guy is at the mercy of the big 10 or if they're big 10 or big eight, whatever they want to call out who the names are. We all know one's Metallica, right? Well, there's been some incredible acts that have gone out with Metallica, but no one's ever broke with Metallica. And if you know, you got to earn that slot. So I think like, the Ice Nine Kills of the world. That band's been a band for 10, 12, 15 years, and they finally made it, and now they're playing Metallica. Now they're seeing the benefits of playing with Metallica because they have fans built in, they have a merchandise, they have a brand, they are what they are. So once you get them, you get them. But if that was 10 years ago and you're just some no, you know, opening band uh, that's very new and there's not a lot of uh, awareness around you and you're not fully sure who you are yet from a perspective overall, it, it's, it's hard to, to create those sticky moments to keep those fans when they watch you, to keep them engaged, to keep them lifelong fans. And so I've always been at the point now where it's like, you get that shot, invest all you got into that shot if the time's right, but also take it back and you got to keep going and headlining. And it, it may not be sexy early on. It may be two, 300 kids in a room at one point, but trust me, if you keep that, that mindset and we've seen it, it's, it, it, it does work um, if you're open to balancing it out that way. But it, that comes down to what the brands want to do, what the companies want to do. And, Honestly, if there's ego involved, a lot of times they don't, you know, people don't want to play in small rooms. I just want to go out and play the big rooms. That's fine. That's your prerogative. But I'm in arts development. I pride myself on being in arts development. 
and brand development. And I think you have to do those things in order to grow successfully. And the artists we're seeing that have done that, Bring the Horizon, great example. They've gone out with everybody. They've also headlined everywhere. And, and the music is there to follow, strong brand, superstar lead singer that's polarizing off the stage. And now you see why Bring the Horizon is what they are. You know, it's a like three-headed monster in that sense. Is the it factor something in your industry? Do you think about that when you're looking for talent? It's the only thing is that I think a word? about. Only thing I think about. Only thing. Because you, get, you have to look at them first. Like, just, I mean, I'm being brutally honest. I tell everyone, like, I got to look at you. Before I get to hear you, before I get anything, I have to look at you. And I, I know it's like, it, and it doesn't mean you have to look a certain way. It doesn't mean you have to be the protocol skinny six foot four model guy with tattoos and looking great. No, no. You just have to look. You have to have the look. It's a look. And Lizzo's got a look, right? Everyone's got their look and their brand of what works for them and what works for their audience. So when you come to me, you're like, hey, I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z. Well, I'm going to look at you first and be like, are you the guy that can do X, Y, and Z? Uh, Mike's dead's a perfect example. Uh, when, I, when I first met him, I looked down. I was like, holy shit. You are a fucking six foot four monster great looking and you make that music okay we got to talk more because that's how it kind of got the conversation started and then you get to know where his mind is where his ambitions are where he wants to take his business i'm not just trying to tour and be in a band my whole life i want to be an actor i want to be a model i want to do high fashion runway new york fashion week you know those are the conversations i have with mike instead and then the music kind of comes with that because that supports his brand because that's who he is so it's like it goes back to the soundtrack of, of of your life you know we all have a soundtrack these artists, these brands, their soundtrack is their music.